where we want to come up with a short statement. It should take us about 30 minutes for us to leave this place so that you can go and file these stories. The more you delay yourselves here, then the blame goes to you. But we just wanted to give uh, a few recent security developments in the operations that we've been uh, uh, handling following the double deadly suicide attacks uh, that occurred on the 16th. As you're all aware, uh, uh, as a country, we face uh, a heightened threat environment uh, from uh, uh, domestic terrorists and uh, collaborators inspired by the ADF terrorist group. Uh, we know that these threats are random, but uh, specifically on soft targets. And uh, would like to warn Ugandans against mass gatherings following the deadly uh, suicide attacks. And uh, the fact that we are going into a festive season, we call upon the public to be very cautious, especially where there are uh, large gatherings and uh, also where the target appears to be soft without to. Uh, uh, any uh, improvised uh, security arrangement because these could be soft targets and you can find yourself uh, injured. Within these few days, we have arrested 21 suspects after dismantling their cells, that is ADF cells in Imperere, Lueza and in Toroko. Amongst these ones, we have operatives, uh, coordinators, and even some of their financiers. We shall avail this list, but of now, of course, so we don't want to alert them. We've been guided uh, by the uh, head of the counterterrorism uh, task team not to give out these names. The arrests were based on information that is given by the suspects earlier arrested. They provided very good accounts or know how they were planning, preparing, and executing the bomb attacks, including uh, the suicide uh, bomb attacks. Despite the significant threats, our joint counter-terror teams have carried out uh, several raids, like I've indicated, and uh, disrupted and dismantled terror cells, the ones that are indicated in Imperere, Alueza, and Toroko, even in Casanado, Oero. In these disruptive, uh, disruptive operations, we managed to recover and remove three sets of improvised explosive devices from the residences, you remember, of Matov Adam, Eke Manhaji in Tula Kawempe, Mugamba Moses Mudasiru, Eke Ekaliowa, the one from uh, Kato Kenansana Municipality, and uh, Muonga Yusuf from Tirekabira in Chira Municipality. We managed to also recover an AK-47 from Warom Felix in the Paida uh, ADF cell. In some of the encounters with agents and collaborators, our counter-terror operatives managed to uh, put out of action a group of four suspected terrorists who form part of the recruitment and logistical coordination network. Uh, this, uh, the recruitment and uh, the logistical coordination network has been established to be in Kampala, Bundibujo, Luero, and in Toroko. Now, this group of four suspected terrorists were crossing back from the DRC through one of the ungazetted crossing points. Uh, during the violent encounter with them in, in Toroko, uh, there was an exchange of gunfire and uh, four suspected terrorists were killed. These include Atindia Yasin, a.k.a. Senawli Adan, Biaruhanga Musa Bahemuka, Turichimanya Joshua Mathias, and Wagonza Joseph. They were all crossing from Chisege in, in Toroko. This group was greatly linked to the number five commander in the ADF structure called Lumisa, they are paying strong allegiance to him, and uh, we have uh, 
uh, additional evidence that we got supporting because they were being surveilled by our monitoring groups along the uh, border with the DRC and uh, they were surveilling them for all that uh, period. There was another encounter today in Insanji where one Sheikh Muhammad Chirevu, aka Abbas Chirevu, was put out of action uh, involving a violent confrontation with our teams. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Chirevu was uh, one of uh, uh, the leaders involved in the active recruitment of uh, uh, personnel into the ranks of uh, ADF and was uh, one of those who were promoting the emergence of ADF terror cells within Kampala. It is unfortunate that uh, he died under those circumstances, but we are now intensifying the manhunt for Sheikh Suleiman in Subuga, uh, who is one of the main actors behind the recruitment, training, radicalization. Uh, he's been providing material support and resources to the domestic terror cells we've talked about, and also providing uh, resources and materials on the use of explosives and destructive devices uh, to these terror cells. Basically, their mission was to create a panic, fear, and also inflict harm, like you've seen uh, in these many uh, bomb attacks. In another operation, we managed to counter a group of 13 uh, that was intercepted at uh, at Karugutu, that is in Toroko district. Uh, they were at the extreme end of crossing from Uganda to the DRC. Uh, it so happened that uh, uh, amongst these 13, we had, uh, uh, we had about uh, uh, seven, uh, seven adults and then six uh, juveniles, including infants, uh, who were being uh, uh, smuggled out of the country into uh, the rebel hideouts in the eastern DRC. So among us, those we intercepted, these are, are young recruits. Uh, for instance, we have uh, Musa Abdallah Ayebare, aged 26. He was a resident of Gang. He's a resident of Gang Wakiso. He was recruited by Sheikh Abbas Chirevu of Kajansi, and he has also given us uh, a list of all those who were being recruited by Sheikh Abbas Chirev. Then there is uh, Fahad Seru, a 21-year-old resident of Katale, uh, Kajansi, also in the same recruitment cell. There is Munubi Shakira, a 26-year-old uh, resident of Katunguru in Kasese. Nasanga Sumaya, aged 18, from Kasanaru Wero. I named Baba Zimariam, aged 21, a resident of uh, Katunguru in Kasese. Then we had uh, juveniles who were also uh, being smuggled out of the country uh, for purposes of recruitment into the ADF ranks in the Eastern DRC. Uh, the juveniles include Imran Sesanga, 12 year uh, male juvenile from Kasanaluero. Uh, there is uh, Aibi Chikomeko, a nine-year-old male juvenile from Kasanaruero. Uh, Muhai Minu Natkunda, eight-year female juvenile from Katunguru Kasese. Shahida Namatovu, five years from Katunguru Kasese. Kahindo Idith, 34, from Nyabusokoma Karu Karugutu Trading Center. I never Abdu, this one was uh, uh, just one and a half years from Katunguru Kasese, was going with her mother. Birunji Jovia, a one month old infant, and Tahad uh, uh, Seru. Uh, so you can see that uh, these are the ADF is uh, widely recruiting, and uh, they have, uh, they continue to open. Uh, many uh, recruitment centers uh, in, the, in the western part, in the central part, 
they used to actively do it a lot in the Busoga region, although it had reduced a bit. So the joint security agencies will continue with all efforts to identify and bring to justice all perpetrators of violence and terrorism uh, uh, with linkages to the ADF and their allied terrorist organizations. So our top priority still remains protecting Ugandans and visitors to the country. We shall continue working tirelessly like we've disrupted uh, this group. Uh, it will help in reducing the violence. And uh, although sometimes the public does not see these results, uh, the security agencies remain very dedicated in conducting these uh, disruptive operations. Uh, that is uh, just a short statement in Luganda. In English, let's do some bit of Luganda. Then uh, we shall show you a few of the pictures of some of those who have been put out of action, those ones who were involved in the recruitment. I don't know whether we have some other photographs like for shaking, so and so on. You the pictures has been reading names, and we want now to put uh, the pictures for you to uh, for you to see what you are actually talking about. Um, Hold on, okay. So, like you said, these are the, the, the recent developments that we've had in the last maybe 48 or so hours. And uh, those are the IEDs, uh, the materials that we've been uh, uh, able to recover. But I also wanted to use this opportunity to actually be very keen about, uh, about the nature when we talk about, because there are so many questions that usually come why are, where are these things? Why aren't you getting them? Why is it getting hard for you to get these people? But realize that the things they're using, the, th the things they're using, this is, what is this? This is a bow. What is this? A watch. What is this? These are syringes. These are wires. So these are things that are out there on the market, and there is no any way you're going to connect them to terror activities. So that is why it becomes hard. And for you, usually people are asking, why aren't we getting these people? Why aren't you overcoming this problem? So the problem is here, that the things we are seeing, which are being used by, the, 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 I mean to make IEDs, are everyday things. There's no way you're going to think about a watch or a, or a bulb, or a, a, and we are not going to say that you don't import bulbs, you don't import syringes. So that is where part of the problem. This is a bug. Yeah? The other person, so this is, these are, you know, these are, I think this is a Wamagalo, this is a screwdriver, this is a phone, a, a simple cartridge phone. So when you're talking about, in terms of uh, maybe smartphone, someone is even using this one. So this is a problem of improvised devices that they use every day, things that we all know. And uh, all these are, I don't know, this is ammonite, it's called what? So, everyday things. So we are, we've been able to recover this from the houses where we've gone. Um, yes. Now, about this uh, is a picture of the people. This is the inside the cell. Everyone has been calling about this hajj. This over is a hajj over sheikh. So this sheikh, like you're saying, was put out of action on inside, in Nisaj. Uh, and he was visiting Rex, and he's part of the recruitment and the coordination, the recruitment and the coordination cell. And this is a very big cell. It deals with the recruitment, but it also deals with logistics. So that is Haji. Those ones who are asking about Sheikh Chir is the one. Uh, this is Atindia Yasin. This is Interoko. This is still part of the coordination of the coordination cell. They coordinate between uh, Uganda and crossing the people recruiting, but also crossing these people into DRC. So, yes, so had also money, ADF operatives, basically Korobutu, Kabalori, and Bondujo.
So that means that side also there are those sleeper cells for ADF within those areas. So that is Yasin, Sena we are done. This is another one, Bialhanga Musa Bahimuka was also put out of action. He's also part of the recruitment team and the recruitment coordination and logistics. He has just been done. Actually, he had, yeah, he had come, he, had, he was coming, he was coming and he fell. We were waiting for him. That is Matthias, also part of Untoroko, still part of the coordination logistics and recruitment. That is Vagonza, still part of logistics, uh, Korea, and still Ntoroko Vundiwujo. These are other ones who have been... Uh, yeah, so these are operations in Kampala, Nsubuka, Hamidu, Matovu, Manhaji, and Mugamba Moses Mudasimu. And is it Mugamba who... Yeah. The one of why... Okay. Katoke. Okay. So, Katoke, okay, this guy in Katoke? Okay? No, 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 no. No? Is it Mudasimu who was from Katoke? Okay? Yeah. Okay, he said, I think he was a journalist. And he was asking, and the problem we have with journalists of media, sometimes when we give information, they want to put holes in everything we say. And then you wonder, how else are you going to get information? If we give you information, you want to patch holes in it, how are you going to get information? Even when we tell you what is happening, you still want, and you don't have alternative sources. Sometimes it surprises me. But someone was asking about, um, how would we get names of people, especially these suicide, the, the bomber, the, the, the suicide bombers, because they were already dead. They didn't have identification on them, so someone was asking, how did you get them? How we got the names uh, was through Mugamba. Because Mugamba was got alive. He was hit, but before we got, before he, uh, he died, we had uh, got a lot of information from them, and that is how we got to know that they had actually prepared three scenes. Only his could not, and even the other one could, by the way, even the other ones, though they, they, they detonated, but that, that they did not get what they wanted. So... Uh, so his was, in, was supposed to detonate his in twice in the evening. Uh -huh. so, so whoever was asking, Please, uh, we need, you, you need sometimes to, to give us the trust or the credibility that we deserve. We do not just talk because we want to be heard, no. And, and, and you keep on pressing for information. We, 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 we say, okay, let's give. And when we give, we say, ah, ah, katiba tulimba, katiba target debat here. There are some details we can't say all the time. And now Mugamba say, well, we can't, there are some details we can't say all the time. But just know that we are also a credible people and a credible force that we tell because we want you to know. That is why. And we want Ugandans to actually know what is going on. Therefore, we do not tell lies. And others will tell you, now, how have you investigated? But these are things that we have, uh, have been around us for some time. We keep on trading. We keep on not. We keep on, you know. Yes. Yeah, so this is, uh, so these are the ones you see of Parliamentary Avenue. This is Zafaru who was in the swift bus. And you see that another colleague, but, uh, but... Yes, this one. You remember there were two? There were two motorcycles? Mm -hmm. So the one we are still hunting down, the one... The, still for yes, the for the, the other one. Um, and uh, these are the recruits so these are the recruits about. we are talking about. I want you to take note of these names. Fahad Seluhu, Musa Abdallah, Sheikh Abbas. Now, Sheikh Abbas is the one who recruited this one. Yeah, Abdallah, and even others. So, Sheikh Abbas, those ones who are saying now, Sheikh Abbas, Sheikh Abbas was a very serious recruiter and coordinator. Munuri Shakira, Nasanga Sumaya, I named her as Mariam, Imran Sesanga. Aibi Chikomeko, Muhaimu Natkunda, Shahida Namatovu, Kahindo Idif, Ainabiona Abdu, and Rungiobia one man, Tahad Seru. That speaks a lot. I will not say, but it speaks volumes. Now, why I mentioned those, that, those names, and I wanted you to be very keen on the names, why I'm stressing them is this the reason why this is, this is the reason why I'm stressing the names. You see? You see? You see? You see? 
all the all the names were had are Muslim names, but they're all putting on when they were their own putting on rosaries. Why? It is deception. When he's moving or when she's moving, she's putting on, incidentally, I forgot mine today. She's putting on a rosary, they're all putting on a rosary. Therefore, when you see them, these are Catholics. That's why I wanted you to take the, the, that, the names and put the names here. Don't think that this one is for no reason. They have a reason why they have to get a mark. You know, this is just deception, but I wanted us to stress that point. Not that I'm, I'm singling out a religion, but I wanted us to draw that uh, distinction between the names and these rosaries, you know? All of them are putting on rosaries, all. It's not by mistake. So those are the recruits, and uh, yeah, that marks, that's all we had to show you. We wanted to show you the pictures, but. Is that, uh, I think we are done. Yeah. We have some questions. In the last, uh, the people who are trying to fight back. I think you've seen in developed countries, murderers. The one thing they know is that once you see security forces, you put up your hands without resisting at all. Because they know the next thing, and that is the principle in security. Once you resist or once you do anything that shows that you have a problem, they will definitely shoot at you. That is not in Uganda, that is world of. I mean, so once you, once you resist to authority, I mean, arrest, or once you show that you're dangerous, they will definitely shoot you. Arrested, you hear that he was arrested. Then, uh, but I'm telling those, are, uh, those yeah. are just gimmicks of words. No. But once we are going to arrest you, and you, 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 you resist, and you fight back, so definitely. Uh, alert which was, uh, which went out there was one that was picked on and uh, shared by the Red Cross, uh, which is a prominent uh, organization. Initially, they had rung uh, our deputy director operations to get to confirm whether there was a, a bomb explosion at Akamwesi. And we told them that no, there was uh, nothing of the sort. It was a scare arising out of increased vigilance and alertness from the public. So our bomb experts managed to respond to the scene and they found it was uh, a package of rubbish uh, and, uh, but of course they managed to countercharge it and they found it was rubbish. It didn't come, it didn't come out positive. We have uh, our canine sniffer dogs uh, that uh, are trained in uh, uh, sniffing chemicals uh, that are dangerous and used in uh, uh, bomb making. So we deployed those dogs and uh, it didn't come out uh, uh, positive, it was negative. But we were surprised that even after giving this information to Red Cross, mm -hmm. uh, they managed to scare the public, <laughs> indicating that they were responding to another bomb explosion in Akamoe. So we want to, we appreciate the role that the Red Cross plays, but uh, on matters of security, especially during this period where there are heightened threats, we don't need to co cause further panic. We need to verify and be thorough and we call upon them to continue working with the security agencies. We share the information once we have it. So there were other, of course, so, uh, calls that were coming in from Nakawa. We had other calls that uh, came from Kawempe Lugoba, uh, but uh, uh, none of them was bomb. Uh, there was, uh, these were just bomb scares. But I want to thank the public. They should not tamper with any abandoned uh, uh, package and uh, where there are suspicious persons, we've given out numbers that they should call. Thank you. Let's get the remaining questions, the three of them, so that we can get out of here. Thank you, Asante. Following the 
But uh, we know that the ADF has a religious ideology. There is nothing to hide about that. But it doesn't show that uh, that ideology is something that is picked upon by any of the religious organizations here in, uh, in, in Uganda. So going back to the question, somebody was saying that uh, uh, in some of these incidents, for instance, uh, the only uh, fatality that occurred basically is that one of, uh, uh, the one which occurred is of uh, uh, Sheikh Chigere. And, uh, but we have 21 other suspects uh, who were rounded up during uh, these last 48 uh, to 72 hours. But in some of these incidents, you, you should do also get to know that we are dealing with a dangerous group. These are not ordinary suspects or traditional suspects that you just go and handle. Many of them will, res will resist arrest. And in the way that they have been radicalized, they will even attempt to disarm police officers, military officers, city officers who are involved in these uh, uh, raids and operations against them. Like it happened in the suspects under General Katumba. We had the one, one of them who pounced on a police officer and tried to grab a gun. It was almost successful for him and it would have been disastrous. We are not playing with the, uh, the these are not chicken thieves. These are very notorious and dangerous suspects. It is life-threatening. You can imagine the danger that our officers also go through when they are arresting people who are laden with the uh, well, we suicide jackets and even with explosives on them. These are life-threatening situations. Don't think that police officers and military officers, because we are security personnel, we don't like our lives. It is not just sacrifice. Now, then uh, I already talked about uh, the bomb scares. Yes, it is true that uh, our cyber uh, crime uh, teams were given instruction uh, to find out those who were importing very disturbing images of bomb victims from West Africa. Others were sharing uh, images from uh, uh, the bomb attacks here in Garissa, Kenya. Very disturbing images, and uh, which are not even in line with uh, the 30, if you look at the 37 victims, we have 13 who are seriously injured, and I uh, uh, started progressing, but uh, they were not as bad as some of the images that the people were sharing. So the cyber crime teams have uh, already thrust, they are going to trace backwards to the source of those uh, uh, videos, disturbing images. Now, uh, it is true that uh, at, uh, in that operation in Insanji, we picked some close associates. Some of these close associates have information surrounding some of the activities that their husbands and maybe wives are involved in. I'll tell you there's one of the uh, girlfriends or fiancés who led us to the arrest of one of the notorious suspects who are being prepared in these attacks. So they are among us the list of 21, but uh, they are close associates who give us that information. We also interrogate them because uh, once you are a couple, there are certain things that uh, happen and you are knowledgeable about, others you are not knowledgeable about. So we don't want to uh, uh, give chance uh, uh, to anything we want, we have to interrogate those close associates, the wives, and even people who are close to who are close to them.